Hello and welcome back to Minecraft. Today we're looking at some more terraforming tools and as you can see the world behind me is looking pretty crazy and messed up because I've just been experimenting with these tools. We're going to be using world edit and some craft scripts made by a person called Inhaze who's pretty damn awesome. You should check him out. There'll be links and such to download all the mods which you can find out how to install elsewhere on the internet. So I'm going to go ahead and assume that you've already installed the mods and we're going to jump straight into it. Now, what I have in my hand is various assorted items, and as you can see, they're named. Now, they're named according to what I've made them do. These are not special objects which are in the mod or whatnot. These are things that I've just renamed in Vanilla Minecraft, and the mod has applied the things to them. So, we're going to first be looking at how to do this sort of thing. You take any sort of item, like a blaze rod or a pumpkin or, or whatnot, and you actually, I don't think a pumpkin will work. But yeah, you take an assorted item and you apply it with some of these scripts. So the way we do that is if we wanted to create a brush, we'd do brush, sphere, then the type of material we want. So let's do lapis lazuli, which is 22, and the size of sphere we want. So let's go for a size 6, which is the maximum. So by doing this, we've created a sphere creator <laughs> we've created a creator um, but yeah that's how it works and you can use this any way you want and I've got a stone here and this one creates air so as you can see you can kind of sculpt things on quite a sort of large scale at the moment and you can work into the depth by creating smaller spheres and using a couple other tools which we'll be looking at so that's pretty damn awesome, pretty damn straightforward. That does not require any sort of plugins to the mod. You can simply do that with World Edit, which is pretty damn awesome. But now let's have a look at some of the extra stuff, the stuff that allows you to do a whole lot more, and that's in Hayes's craft, craft scripts. So this is the flatten tool. However, at the moment it doesn't seem to be working, but we can fix it simply by showing you guys how to make a craft script craft script brush I suppose so let's go ahead and do CS build list and this will show up all of the build commands which you've installed now in order to use these you have to apply them so let's go CS build flatten and I'm going to do S30 and B one. Now if I click this button here, it's going to take a while to load because it's clearing out quite a large chunk. But hopefully I can explain to you what's happened through what I just did. Now as you can see, the floor has turned into stone. Now that doesn't always happen. It didn't just happen to be coincidence that this part of land had a bit of stone under it. If we take a look back at our command, the B1 part, the B stands for block, and the 1 is the item ID. And I chose stone, because it's off the top of my head, and S is 30, which stands for size. Now, the S and the B, they're what are called flags, and they're what the program used to differentiate the values. For example, if you just put a bunch of values in, it wouldn't know which values to apply to which sort of parameter. So by using flags, you can do that. However, it would be a massive pain to have to remember every single flag for every single command. So, there are two ways of finding out the flags. You can do CS build help and then the command, such as flat flatten, and you'll get a little list and it'll say all the little flags and whatnot. Very useful. But you can also just sort of skip that a little bit and just go CS build commands and now you have a list of all of the commands in detail very useful now before I end off this part of the video I'm just going to give a little sort of go through of a couple of the different things which I quite like um, firstly we have spike um, and as you can see from me messing around with this previously it just creates large spikes in the ground and there are a couple awesome little flags that you can use for this, so I'm going to go CS build help spikes and explain it to you, or spike, 
There we go. Um, so let's look at this. We have S flag for base size, B for block type, L for min length, comma max change. So what does that mean? Well, that means that you'll put two values after the L. You would write L, and then you'd say, let's just actually do this. Let's um, make sure we've got our spike selected, um, because I don't want to change one of the other ones. CS build spike. Let's do S40. No, let's do S10, maybe. B. Uh, should we do 49? And L. 40 change 50 so the 40 will be the minimum length and the max change will be 50 so let's actually put that to 20 and we're going to get some pretty damn massive spikes I think but they look awesome so you know whatever now that's a pretty awesome tool but another one that I really like is the tree and vine so first let's go over the tree now, if I just click that, as you can see, a tree has been spawned. And, you know, that was very effortless, and it looks pretty good. Could use some touch-ups, but, you know, it's not perfect. It's never going to be perfect. Um, and, yeah, you can just sort of throw trees around if you just sort of need some trees around that people aren't really going to tell. And I've created it so that the trees are like that. Now, you can do it however you want. If I just do CS build tree and as you can see it says no tree type was found and that gives us a way of finding out the different types of trees so let's go ahead and do a palm tree as you can see we can just stick down palm trees willy nilly um, they look pretty cool the way they work is the sort of shape on the top is a set shape the thing that varies is the angle and I believe you can make the size vary as well so yeah that's pretty cool let's go and try branched and let's also have a look at some of the other parameters so we can do s which is size so let's do s10 and we can do w which is the wood block um, so we can change that to I don't know one and then the leaf block which is L and we can change that to Let's think of something creative very quick, or we might well not and just do lapis lazuli because I've been doing that quite a lot. As you can see, it's created our thing. It looks all right. Um, a bit interesting, but let's just have a look at some of the other different things. I haven't messed around with all of these. I'll be perfectly honest with you. You can also change the density with 10 or with D. Um, so let's put that under no 40. Again, I haven't exactly messed around with these too much. Rainforest. I quite like that. That is pretty damn awesome. So with that, we're going to move on to the next thing. The next thing I'm just going to... I actually don't have something for, so we're just going to grab a diamond. And this is going to be vine. So we're going to do CS build and then help vines now we get the options for vines which are awesome vines are freaking amazing so let's go and do cs build vines and do i'm going to do s30 d5 i'm not exactly how sure that works and b i don't know i think 89 i think that would be pretty cool and what this basically does is, oh goodness, I used the, did I use the right thing? Well, we can see what happens. Oh goodness gracious me. Um, what it does is it drapes objects over other objects. And as you can see, the density is probably a little too high. So let's take out the density flag and see it on its natural density. Um, let's go ahead and just plonk it down somewhere. I don't know, that could be pretty cool. Give it a second to load and 1.5 and these lighting changes, it's not too happy. And that just looks friggin' amazing. That is awesome. So as you can tell, this is an, a very powerful tool for lighting up caves and 
giving things a awesome look. And if we just go ahead and go CS Vine, you can see that you can just use it as vines, which also looks awesome. And we can just apply it to some of these spikes and everything is going to be awesome. So maybe on the trees. And yeah, I think I managed to crash, mine crash Minecraft for a second there. Um, God knows what I did. But yeah, that's not too bad because we basically re reached the conclusion to this video. I've just gone over a couple of the tools. Yep, Minecraft crashed. Um, goodness knows why. But you know, when you're using mods, you've got to expect this sort of thing. So I suggest that you do the most of your building in a outside world and then in the next video we're going to be looking at how to export things across worlds because doing things as as i just sort of demonstrated accidentally on your world could create problems and is not something you probably want to be doing so we're going to be using mc edit to do that and i hope to see you there that's about it for this video if you have any questions put them in the conversation below and i'll see you guys next time thanks for watching